We've got Six Nations and Sevens Rugby for you this week on Dirt Trackers, episode number six. Ireland opened their campaign away to Wales at the Aviva Stadium, so we chat to Keen Healy, Johnny Sexton and Andrew Trimble about that, and we ask them if revenge is on the cards. Myself and Rory Keane will talk Ireland and Six Nations in part one, and discuss the Wellington Sevens, which kicks off this weekend in New Zealand. We also have an exclusive interview with Canadian Sevens player Connor Trainer, who is hoping to add to the tries that he picked up against the All Blacks in his last outing at the Westpac Stadium, a little quad annual tournament known as the Rugby World Cup. First off, let's see what three of Ireland's leading players make of the challenge of facing Wales on Sunday. What are you expecting from Wales on Sunday, Ken? Um, tough competition, you know, it's going to be a bit of a fight up front, as I'd imagine, you know, looking over their scrums and stuff, and um, past few games and stuff, that's a strong scrum, and, and uh, it's going to be kind of see, see what we can do to defuse that, and then put ourselves on, on the front foot with advantage in the scrum. And Keane, speaking after that game uh, over in Wellington, Conor Murray was speaking after saying there was a feeling that you were beaten up a little bit. Now, like, revenge is the taboo word at the moment, but how much of a motivation is that for you to go out and put it right? Um, not much, no. It's in the past. It's a different year, different competition. It's uh, it's about going out with a, with a new look on it and, and uh, playing our own game and doing our own job and winning. Don't really see much need for revenge because it's looking awfully back in the past rather than looking forward. And would you agree with Connor's kind of standpoint? That I know it was just after the game, but I know he spoke those words just after the game. But do you reckon they did kind of put it up to you physically and had the advantage of you at the time? Um, it was a very physical game and they got the advantage in edges, but like like we broke their line a lot of times. But didn't didn't finish on it. But when they broke our line, they did. So it's just it's not being screwed on that extra little bit. But that's in the past. So Johnny, um, your last game out at the Aviva for Leinster, you nailed a drop goal from beyond the halfway line. You, you were involved in that great try. You kind of started you're in the middle and you finished it. How much was that of a spark for your season? Um, well, it was probably only you know it was. I think the drop goal was from 40 metres. Uh, I don't need one from 50 and ran a little bit further. So, uh, no, I don't. You know, I, I didn't. I don't think of it like that. Um, you know, like I said, I've been happy with how I've played. You know, for the whole of this season. You know, obviously, place kicked poorly in a couple of games in the World Cup, and you know that's that can happen to to any place kicker. Unfortunately for myself, it happened on the world stage in probably the two biggest games. You know, in my career, but. That's life, and it's just you know move on from it. And you know I've been happy enough uh, for the majority of the season with how it's been going. Do you learn from that, Johnny? Did you say it just happened at the wrong time? Can you what can you positive can you take from? Yeah, I probably beat myself up a bit at the time. You know, I I I don't think I could have practiced harder. Or I don't think I could have um, done much differently. It just you know, the even against them? Australia, um, you know, I kicked. Nailed one straight after half time, mm. and then I kicked another really good kick, and it came off the post. And you know, if that had gone over, I probably would have kept kicking and might have, you know, finished the game five from seven. It's not a bad return in a big international game. And, you know, we never would have been talking about this, but you know, the small margins. And you know, at the time, I wasn't thinking like that. But uh, you know, I've got a lot of good people around me. And, uh, you know, speaking to them, that's the fact of the matter. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, it doesn't sit well with me that it did happen, in, you know, on the world stage. Something that I was building up towards for a couple of years, and it still hurts now. But you know, like I said, it's, you know, I've moved on from it, and uh, hopefully I'll be I'll be there again in a few years' time. And I can put that right for the moment. It's just focus on trying to have a big Six Nations with Ireland. You certainly miss, um, you know, Brandon Driscoll not being in a squad. It's, it's, it's a massive loss. It certainly is um, a big loss for a squad. You know what he has to say, but probably more importantly, the, the impact he has, is, he will, he would potentially have on the pitch as well. Um, is definitely going to be lost. But I think everybody's fully confident of what um, Paulie can bring to a squad. Um, you know, I, I think there's there's no 
no better man to, to fill Brian's boots and, and do a good job with him, Paul. Captain spoke of you as a possible candidate to replace Brian um, at, at 13. Was that something you would have been happy with had you been asked? Or? Yeah, definitely. It would have been something that would have surprised me um, because I haven't played there that much. Um, but um, definitely, as far as I'm concerned, um, I just want to get on the pitch and play as much rugby as I can. And I don't really care what numbers I'm on back. I just want to play. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think... Um, there's definitely a buzz around Ireland camp and Six Nations and um, and you know this week I think don't want to read too much into what happened to the World Cup or what happened last year in the Six Nations with Wales but it definitely is something a little bit more special about a Wales game the last couple of years and um, to be a part of a team that's gone out on Sunday to play against them is you know is, is a massive honour and responsibility and I'm I'm really excited about the challenge. What do you kind of think of the uh, the team that's been announced? Uh, conservative, or are you happy enough with it? Hi, right, Pat. Um, yeah, it's. I can't really argue with it. It is. It is a conservative selection, really, isn't it? It's kind of uh, the same pack that started against Wales in the quarter final to defeat. You know, Earls Earls probably Earls playing Earls Earls on merit being selected out. I said they're Sexton Sexton. Just probably nipping it ahead of Bogara there. You know, Trimble, probably good luckiest man during the World Cup. Probably the 16th man of that team. Gets it on the left wing. Uh, it's good. One, one good thing for me, it's good to see Peter Obani on the bench. Definitely on form. He should be there in the number 19 jersey. He can add a huge amount when he comes on. But all in all, conservative. But, you know, it's very hard to argue with a lot of those selections, really, at the moment. You know, I, I, I really think it's not like England's World Cup. I don't think there was a need for drastic overhaul of the site. But, you know, we'll wait and see. I, I'm not 100% sure about the centre combination, but I'm all my strong on Sunday. O'Kell and Nick's in ahead of Dunnick and Ryan there. You know, the seems to be the ticking point that is O'Kell and seems to be more of Les. Seems to put, seems to, Les Kiss seems more of a fan of O'Kell and O'Kell and seems to be better at doing the, the choke tackle technique and there's, there's been mutterings about is O'Callaghan probably the better scrummager but uh, certainly you've got to go right could feel a little bit aggrieved there because he's more or less you've sort of O'Callaghan this season with Munster and O'Callaghan has leapfrogged him on the international stage maybe it's experience maybe it's to do with back Ireland haven't been together since the, the World Cup Kidney's looking for continuity but we'll wait and see I mean you know the next few weeks will tell a lot and uh, Kidney stuck with the old heads for now, but if results don't go his way the next few weeks, he might have to start blooding a few players. Yeah, like just at the press conference yesterday, the, the talk all seemed to be about the, the battle between O'Callaghan and Dunnick Ryan, and also the the centre, like Errol's been used in the centre, but there seemed to be no talk at all. There wasn't mentioned as an issue at all. Like just Trimble's, you know, he's, he's not playing on his favourite wing, but he's on the left wing. That didn't seem to be an issue to anybody, and then nobody seemed to bring up the point. It's everyone just kind of seems to take for granted now that Sexton is the number ten. So, so I was looking forward to the future, and um, there was no real debate over whether O'Gara deserves to keep his jersey. So they're kind of two two of the, the real interesting things. And um, the fact that everyone's just kind of they, they assume Sexton's the man in possession at the moment, and then the fact that kind of um, Trimble can kind of play in the left wing, no problem. O'Gara, bearing age. Keith, 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 Keith he's playing the best rugby of his life. You know, the, the two kind of it's two stoppage time drop goals. I mean, he was flat and composed and aggressive against Northampton in that win in the stadium. Mk Sexton equally has been good, and it's it's going to be a drama. You know, it's going to be very like the World Cup. O'Gara got the upper hand there. Six Nations back to back in back before that's the autumn internationals. You know, there's there's a lot more to the story to come, really. You know, and the thing with there's been there's been a talk, and I've read it in a few places that Sexton will not flourish with Ireland until O'Gara retires. But like O'Gara's not gonna, like O'Gara's gonna definitely this season and maybe next season, and O'Gara's not gonna give up chasing Sexton and putting the pressure on him. But uh, yeah, so I think Trip, I, I think Trip is kind of an unorthodox swinger. Anyway, I don't think it's a huge thing him playing on the left. It's probably, you know, like he's been just. He looks so dangerous on the right wing for us to all season, but I think he's the kind of player he's quite he's he's the kind of guy as well Trimble likes to come in field and 
you know, run up our, run up soft shoulders and come on and take a bit of ball up. You know, he'll he'll certainly be needed that way because our, our midfield, you know, two very elusive runners, but not a lot of bulk there against potentially Jamie Roberts and Jonathan Davies. So I think what they'll be looking to do is with Les Kiss in charge, especially. I think they'll be looking to kind of get Trimble into that zone behind Darcy and Earls and like running a hard, running a soft shoulders. But um. Yeah, they're two interesting selections, you know, Garen Sexton, it's going to be it's going to be like a pendulum for the whole championship, I think, you know. Sexton, we all know what he can do going forward, but he has been suspect with the kicking team for Ireland, especially at the World Cup tight game. I know Garen has come on and, like, like a bit like Oli Gunnar Solskjaer from Man United in his heyday, you know, could have, Garen seems to come on the last 20 minutes and steady the ship or change the game, so, yeah, it's going to be, oh, I can't wait to watch it really, I think it's going to be very interesting championship in regards to those two because it's just a tussle and it's two very very kind of selfish would be the word they're two very determined characters and we'll we'll have to win and see who's going to come out on top you know a sexton finally beat off O'Gara will O'Gara come back to him and then I suppose you have the um just looking at the other games then coming up the weekend and um yeah there's there's a lot of change in 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 a few quarters as well the Scots have brought in a few new guys like Denton and uh, England have brought uh, Farrell in and yeah, even guys like Mike Brown, and then you look at the uh, French who have Fofana in. Not too much of a change in their camp, and then Italy are kind of you know keeping it um, safe enough, I suppose, at the moment for now. But um, yeah, where do you kind of see the main threats being? Like, or who, who do you reckon the favourites are in your mind? Um, I genuinely, I think France are the team to beat. They've got to go to Wales in their last match, but I just think they have the best draw. You know, they they're, they're at home to Italy. This first week up, you know, new coach, new setup, you know, some good passers. I think the guy for fan you mentioned there, Pat, is going to be, could be the star of the tournament. He is an absolute, he's a gem, he's a fantastic rugby player, real elusive, exciting inside centre. But he's next to Rouge, he's Claremont partner. You know, Aaron Ortke, interestingly, he has, he's, he's on the bench, but if you watch Louis Pickamall this year for Toulouse, you'd see it. I mean, I, th- I think Pickamall could be he could be one of the greats of French rugby. This guy is just, he's an absolute monster. I mean, they call him the iceberg in France because he's just this absolute monster of a man. But he can, I tell you one thing, he can, if you see, you'll see it in this championship. We saw it when he played against Ireland in Dublin during the warm-up series for the World Cup. This guy can motor when he gets into open open areas. And then you've got Deuce of Fire, Bonaire in the back row. But the thing about him is that they've, got, they've started off two home games. They've got Italy at home this weekend. Uh, they've got Ireland at home the weekend after, and you know, you know, they they have no they have no reason to fear Ireland in Paris. You know, Ireland have only won there once, and probably was it the last thirty two years. And then they're 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 facing they're facing Scotland. Then they have no fear of Scotland. Then they've got a very we don't know what England are a uh, pure egg. We don't know what we don't know what's going to happen with this English side. Lancaster could come out and they could be they could play absolutely fantastic rugby, but I suspect they're going to struggle because. It's just a very green team. And the most worrying thing for England, I find, is the core of that team are Northampton players. And as I said before in the podcast, there's just something mentally with those Northampton players. It's just a bit of a soft centre for them. And England are a team that I'd worry about. And they've got the Calcutta Cup up first against a fired-up Scotland team. And I think that's, it's on paper, that's the best Scotland team I've seen in a long time, even with the Enterprise of backline. The Lamont brothers are back. Max Evans is good form. This guy, Lee Jones, they're raving about really quick back row this guy Denton I've been really impressed with but uh, I think Scotland could be dark horses but then again everybody says that every year and I think it's I think it's France I'd really back France I think Wales if they had their full 15 you know, they could really challenge but they're just their injury, injuries are going to cripple them for this championship I think and I I just don't I don't think they have particularly in the front five to absorb those injuries but France for me, you know, with with their, with their new players, with their co- they've got a coach now who knows what he's doing and is actually picking players in the right positions, and there seems to be a bit of logic there. He's got Yashvili for form number nine, and you know, it's it's it's, it's I can't look beyond France for this at the moment. 